everyone, my name is Beverly and I'm with the Casita Chattahoochee County Public Library and today is our teen program called You Wanna Cosplay. If you wanna cosplay, you have come to the right place. Today I'm going to give you some amateur tips and tricks to making your own cosplay costume with some things that you may have around your house and some other things that you can find in a department store or that you can order online for a pretty good price. So. That being said, there's only one rule of cosplay, and that is everyone can cosplay. You can cosplay right here. Your cat can cosplay. You can cosplay. Everybody can cosplay. So grab your hat and let's -a go cosplay. Hi guys. For beginner cosplay, you don't have to be a seamstress. And this really is not just for beginners. This is for any level of cosplay. Um, I am not the best seamstress, but I have made a costume or two in my life that has served its purpose. It hasn't looked the best, but it does its job. Um, you can buy fabric at any kind of department store, Walmart, some Walmarts sell them. This is where I got this fabric, and I'm going to show you this fabric put together in a little bit for a costume that I did. Different fabrics, um, some have embellishments on them like this. Uh, they're different kind of stretchy. This one doesn't stretch at all. However, some do. Halloween is coming up. There's a lot of nice ones out there. This came from a craft store. You see the spider webbing in it. And this would make a great cape or something. And it's uh, kind of a net material. And this oh, is really nice. This is kind of a pleather material. Uh, pleather is like a fake leather feeling. Uh, so this would make a really good either skirt or bodice for a piece or a uh, even a, like I hate to go there again but a cape uh, another good use for that would be a cape if you're really good at sewing you may even get a nice shirt out of it uh, some armor things like that and then this fabric is kind of like a faux fur it's not real and over the fur it has like a silver metallic paint over it so uh, this would make like a really nice vest and you can see kind of when I undo it and drape it this one you may even be lucky enough to use without any kind of sewing if you could get it around the front and then you could band it around the middle with a belt you have already just like a nice fur kind of looking uh, vest type item and so there's fabrics like this that you may not even have to sew if you can belt it and bunch it and otherwise fit it around yourself. Um, another thing that is helpful and are these simplicity patterns and these are great for cosplayers. They are at the fabric stores. Uh, this one, for example, would be great with that pleather material. And also there's a foam material I'm going to show you later in the video that gives things structure. Like you see, this is like a fake armor and there's actually a kind of foam that they sell that you use for that. And of course, you know, not saying we're all children here, but this is more or less, you could modify these children costumes for a more conservative outfit for a teen. Um, or even the head pieces are kind of one size fits all. Okay, so just stuff like this, keep in mind, and drawing inspiration from that, you can see the boots are all sewn. These are not boots that are bought. Uh, they are covered up, and uh, boot covers are another good use for, such as that pleather fabric that I showed you, and also for the foam material that we're going to be talking about in just a bit. Uh, so stay tuned and on to our next segment of the video are just some very simple sewing techniques to help you learn to put pieces of fabric together. So I'm going to demonstrate on a piece of fabric like this so that you can clearly see just I picked three basic stitches that anybody can do. If I can do them, you can do them. So that's why I picked them. Um, they are uh, pretty simple and they will hold your outfit together. My outfit I made is held together for three years now. So uh, we'll get to that next. Thank you. Another important thing in cosplay is accessorizing with props. Here I have oh, a good looking Mario. He has this nice costume in order. We did not make this. This is a pre-bought costume. But we are going to accessorize it. Now, what is Mario without K 
happy. A hat can bring so much to your costume. You see my ears I wear here when I'm doing this video. But a hat can bring so much to your costume. And what is Mario without Cappy? Right? Come on. We all know Odyssey, right? Alright, what's Mario without little brother Luigi? Taller but smaller. What's Mario without Yoshi, his faithful companion, and the ever-annoying but lovable Captain Toad? Alright, so not only do we have Mario, we have Mario with his props in cosplay, we call them. His props, or his crew. So now we have Super Mario, so accessorize your cosplay. And when you are completely done making your costume or otherwise modifying this old t-shirt you found in the closet or cutting up your cardboard or your foam and you have all your props and you are ready to put your costume together, then you can proudly reveal to the world your favorite character of choice. Now you are ready to cosplay your favorite character. For my choice, clearly I, well hopefully clearly, I am Link from The Legend of Zelda video games. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about my costume. You may have seen it in pieces throughout the video. Uh, my shield is a really simple construct I made out of a uh, cardboard box, a chewy delivery box that we got in the mail. And I cut it up and actually hot glued the uh, arm straps on so when I put it on, my arm slides right through it and I can play battle or whatever, pose for photos with the adoring fans that maybe one day I'll have. Uh, the front part actually, oh, the uh, straps here are made from a mini blind. We had some broken blinds and I took them apart and I sewed fabric around them. I sewed an old navy t-shirt around the broken mini blinds. And strung that through. The buckle here is painted. It's not real. It's paint. Uh, the shield emblem on the front of my straps is also painted. And this belt belonged to my dad. I borrowed my dad's belt. Uh, the straps go all the way down to the back and they wrap around the back of the belt. Uh, this blouse is an old blouse from Goodwills. I got it for about three dollars. And the polo shirt is one I had in my closet from gosh forever ago. Probably from high school. And the hat is made from that green material that I showed you all earlier. It's that um, material that we practice the stitching in. And the embellishments are a t-shirt. Any of this yellow is a t-shirt that I cut up. So clearly my costume uh, cost maybe $2 to make. And that was for the purchase of the fabric. The box was something I had around the house. And the craft paint and stuff was also stuff that I had. Uh, sword, I forgot our sword expense. What we, we got this at, oh, a Dollar General. And we got it two Halloweens ago when we paid $3 for it. So in total, my whole look here cost us $5. So like I said, cosplay is for everybody. If I can do it, you can do it. The point is, get out there, show your creativity, and have fun. Thank you. So, when your costume is all put together and you are ready to go outside and show it off to the world, being outside in cosplay goes hand in hand. Uh, you get some exercise, you get some fresh air, and people will give you some funny looks sometimes, but it's okay because you're having fun and that's all that matters. So, exercise your creativity, show off your costume, get out there right now in the wild, open, outdoor enjoy yourself because that's what cosplay is all about and remember rule one everybody can cosplay